Welcome to Scoop Canada, your go-to source for the latest news and in-depth analysis. Today, we will discuss a concerning revelation that has sent shockwaves through the nation. More than $600 million in pension dues have been invested in China's electric vehicle sector, according to disclosures from the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. This alarming discovery raises serious questions about the management of Canadians' hard-earned pension funds and the current government's accountability. The Liberal Party, under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, is once again at the center of a financial scandal. This time, it's Finance Minister Christy Freeland's budget that is under scrutiny. How could such a significant portion of Canadian pension funds be directed towards investments in a foreign market, especially in China, amidst ongoing geopolitical tensions and concerns over national security? This mismanagement is not just an isolated incident, it reflects a broader pattern of fiscal irresponsibility and lack of transparency within the Liberal government. Trudeau's administration has been criticized for its continuous overspending and failure to prioritize the economic interests of Canadians. While the Prime Minister is busy with social media stunts and superficial engagements, critical issues like the misuse of pension funds are being neglected. The implications of this $600 million investment are far-reaching. Not only does it jeopardize the financial security of Canadian retirees, but it also raises ethical concerns about supporting industries in countries with questionable human rights records. The Liberal government's approach to handling taxpayer money and pension funds is proving to be reckless and short-sighted. This scandal should serve as a wake-up call for Canadians. It's high time we demand accountability and a change in leadership. The Conservative Party, under the leadership of Pierre Polyav, continues to emphasize fiscal responsibility and transparency. Unlike the Liberals, the Conservatives are committed to safeguarding Canadian interests and ensuring that our financial resources are managed prudently. Before we move further, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our Conservative-themed products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada. According to a report by Rebel News, more than $600 million of Canadians' pension dues have been invested in China's electric vehicle sector, according to disclosures from the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. This shocking revelation raises serious concerns about how the Liberal government is managing Canadians' hard-earned money. Finance Minister Christia Freeland recently pointed fingers at China, accusing them of flooding the market with cheap electric vehicles EVs as part of an intentional state-directed policy. In response, the federal government announced plans to review the impact of Chinese EVs on our domestic industry. They've already committed over $52 billion in subsidies to ensure EVs are made here in Canada. Despite these efforts, the Pension Plan Investment Board revealed that it has invested $604 million of Canadian pension funds in the Chinese electric vehicle sector. According to Blacklock's reporter, these investments include $287 million in Contemporary Amperex Technology Co. LTD, the world's largest electric auto battery manufacturer, and $12 million in Great Wall Motor Colorado, which makes Aura brand electric cars. No explanation was given for these investment choices. This situation highlights a disturbing trend of fiscal irresponsibility and lack of transparency within Justin Trudeau's administration. While Trudeau is busy with social media antics and superficial engagements, critical financial issues like this are being overlooked. The misuse of pension funds puts the financial security of Canadian retirees at risk and raises ethical questions about supporting industries in countries with questionable human rights practices. Moreover, this scandal underscores the need for better management and accountability. The Liberal government's reckless spending and mismanagement of taxpayer money continue to jeopardize our economic stability. In contrast, the Conservative Party, led by Pierre Polyav, advocates for fiscal responsibility and transparency, prioritizing Canadian interests and prudent financial management. You know, it's quite something when you hear that the Trudeau government has splashed out over $93 million just on booking hotels for asylum seekers in less than two years. And now they're toying with the idea of buying hotels outright to cut costs. It's mind-boggling. Imagine they've been leasing out thousands of hotel rooms across Canada from Montreal to Niagara Falls, all on taxpayers' dime. I mean, just think about it more than $100 million spent in Niagara Falls alone to house nearly 5,000 asylum seekers in hotels. That's an average of $208 per person per day, including meals and security. And they expect us to believe this is a cost-effective solution? Let's not forget, housing asylum seekers is supposed to be a provincial responsibility, but thanks to the pandemic, the federal government has decided to foot the bill. They talk about alternatives like building reception centers, but why wasn't this planned from the start? Instead, they're scrambling, 
wasting more taxpayer money on temporary fixes. And here's the kicker, Mark Miller. The immigration minister nonchalantly says asylum claimants aren't going away anytime soon. Well, maybe if they had a better handle on immigration policies and border management, we wouldn't be in this mess. It's clear Trudeau's priorities are out of whack. While Canadians struggle with rising costs and economic uncertainty, his government is busy spending millions on makeshift accommodations and then contemplating buying hotels. It's irresponsible, to say the least. In the end, it's U.S. Canadians who are left footing the bill for their mismanagement and lack of foresight. Trudeau promised transparency and accountability, but all we see is more of the same wasteful spending and excuses. It's time for real solutions, not band-aid fixes that cost us millions. Also take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. It seems Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's grand plan to construct nearly 4 million new homes by 2031 is hitting a major roadblock as the construction sector faces yet another downturn with fewer residential starts. Statistics Canada's latest GDP report reveals a concerning trend while Canada's real GDP saw a modest 0.3% increase in April. The construction sector experienced a notable 0.4% contraction, marking the sharpest decline among all industries. This setback is primarily driven by a significant 2.3% drop in residential building construction, the largest decline since May 2023. These figures underscore a broader pattern of reduced activity in both new home construction and renovations, with current levels plunging 24% below the peak observed in April 2021. Despite early signs of recovery in early 2024, particularly in the first quarter, the recent data raises doubts about the sustainability of this progress. This downturn couldn't come at a worse time for Canada's housing goals. The government's commitment to ramping up housing supply now faces heightened challenges. The Canadian Urban Institute has highlighted the monumental task ahead, estimating infrastructure investments upwards of $750 billion will be needed. Meanwhile, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation stresses the urgent need for an additional 5.8 million homes, far outstripping the current pace of housing starts. To meet even the most conservative targets, a substantial increase in construction activity is essential. The Federation of Canadian Municipalities estimates the infrastructure cost alone for each new home at $107,000, translating to a staggering $620.6 billion for 5.8 million homes. When factoring in other infrastructure-related expenses, the total requirement balloons to approximately $758 billion. Trudeau's housing initiative once seen as ambitious and necessary, now faces serious doubts amidst economic downturns and escalating financial demands. The road to meeting Canada's housing needs appears longer and more challenging than anticipated, posing significant implications for the economy and the government's credibility on housing policy. While the vision of millions of new homes holds promise for addressing housing shortages, the reality of economic downturns and financial requirements paints a stark picture. Trudeau's government must navigate these challenges adeptly to restore confidence in its housing agenda and effectively address the pressing needs of Canadians seeking affordable and accessible housing. Stay informed with Scoop Canada for further updates on this developing story. Subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all the latest news and join us in demanding integrity and transparency from our leaders. Together, we can hold the Trudeau government accountable and ensure that justice is served for all Canadians.